Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Best Friends Who. Oh, yeah, baby. What the hell was that? It's like an Austin Powers thing. <laughs> What's, I what? thought you used to go like Shagaloof, but not Shagaloof. Like shagaloof. Always shag, shag a baby. What is it? I've got a turtle sticking out my fucking a hole. Baby bat ribs. That's not what Austin Powers says. No, but there's a villain, Austin Powers, who's a really big guy. He says that? Yeah, I've got a thought I'll stick it out of my ear hole. I think you've watched a different film to me. I guarantee you I'm right. Okay, well, James is in a weird mood today and he's dressed weird too. You know where I said sometimes James dresses like my dad and he had that <coughs> diesel button-up shirt? That's what he's got okay, on Hey, man. Hey, man. This is the one, man. Thank you, Diesel, for sending this to me. <laughs> I really like it. Isabella loves it too. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, I... I I'm that turning into the full form. That's such a dad outfit. Oh. Stop! Because it's actually scaring me. You're going to get possessed in a minute. Yeah. I actually would love to get possessed. What? Just, I wonder what it, no, I wonder if I, I, I'm the type of guy who just wants to feel and like, I want to know what it's like to get stabbed. You're that type of guy that wants to just, well, type of kid that's like, I want to bring my arm so I know how it feels. I've never broken a bone, but I don't want to do that because I've hyper extended my neck once and that was painful enough, right? <laughs> I've been bottled, been glassed, mm -hmm. so you know that felt like a stabbing. Technically, was, but I didn't feel that because I was too much adrenaline. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I want to feel it, but not have the repercussions of getting stabbed. I want to get shot. I want to get hit by a car. I Jeez. know all of these things are awful, Don't. but I want to feel it. Man. No, no, you have a girlfriend. Yes, I have a mum. Don't put me in pain. I Don't have a dad. Put me in I have more brothers grief. and sisters. Don't say you want to get hit by a car. You know today's a full moon. Apparently the strongest moon that we've had in such a long time. And apparently this day is the perfect day to manifest your dreams. You could have fucking told me. Um, I'm poor as fuck. I could have just manifested some money. But now yeah, I've manifested got, my death. You've got till 12am tonight. So um, get... I suppose it was 12am yesterday. Get, or 12am <laughs> we'll, in the morning. We'll get uh, manifesting. But don't manifest stupid shit like that. Because that's going to make my anxiety even worse. And that's actually something we're talking about in today's episode. Um, we are talking about how we feel like mental health affects our day-to-day -day life. But we're also going to be talking about death. Uh, quite a morbid episode today, guys. <laughs> You're in a really weird mood. I'm just trying to bring up the energy. Do you know what I mean? I'm talking about death. I'm trying to make yeah. it No, but it's going to be a fun episode because... I'm... Oh, so fun. Fucking dying. I ah! love it. No, but life after death is something that really fascinates me. And I feel like it yeah. fascinates you too. Oh, yeah. This is the type of pillow talk that we have where we just can talk for ages about weird shit like this. Oh, yeah. You know, our pillow talk. You know, I'm so romantic. Like, what would you do if I, like, died or you died? <laughs> and where would you go? Like, do you want to meet? Would you know? be in the stars or would you like? I don't know. You're making fun of yourself, but this is Your the conversations soul. you have. I don't have it like that. I want to live life to the fullest, man. I want to take care of my family. I do. I don't want to die with regrets. Oh, I can die with regrets. That's, That's fine. Life's full of regrets. That's what life's for. <laughs> to make mistakes, yeah. Well, you were manifesting in the front room this morning, weren't you? Yeah, I uh, know. Last night. Last night. I was bending into the couch. I was wearing my green tracksuit. I was sitting <laughs> on the <laughs> green sofa. <laughs> you scared the shit out of me. Scared the shit out of you. And I was manifesting like... Um, just like the podcast he, he was in the corner wearing an all green track suit and we've got a green plant behind us as well as green wool and you've got green hat on and green headphones guess what my favorite color doing, is guys i'm Blue. just doing my day-to-day -day tasks in the kitchen look over and there's just <laughs> these huge eyes just staring at me god i nearly left my i left my that was an hour body experience god i nearly died Love i went it. to the place we think about Where's life after death? That's where I there. went. Tell us what it's like. I've experienced it. <laughs> Tell us what it's like, huh? God, it's it's a feeling, man. You can't explain it in words. But dance it then. <laughs> do it in the for do the medium of dance. Tell us how it felt like. Oh yeah. Get it, girl. Whoa. Oh fuck. No it's stop. Temporary. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> Oh my god. Well, we asked you guys on Instagram what you think life is like after death. And I got a lot of responses. And is I it? think we should go through them. Oh man, that's interesting. I feel like this is the type of conversation you have with like 3 a.m. at a guy's party when you're <laughs> off your tits on whatever substance. And you're just chatting at your ass, man. You're like, I love you, bro. I know I love you, bro. Like, if we die, we die together, bro. I've never had that. Because you're not fun. You don't go out the house past 1 a.m. You come back and you're like, I'm so fucking drunk. Where's your kebab at? <laughs> I haven't had a kebab in so long, but anyway. Go on, read them out. Nothing. I think it's just like being asleep and not dreaming. You're not aware of anything. I don't get That's that. That's dark. I don't get that, though. I can't actually fathom that's the case. 
Nobody knows. Well, that's what religion kind of is anyway. Well, so do you think religion's a scapegoat then for people that can't just comprehend death as being death? I see why people would believe that. Yeah. I believe in God personally. Why? But, well, I think it is more a comfort thing. Yeah. Like there isn't any facts where I'm like, God is real. You know what I mean? I've never had like an experience where I see God or well, God isn't a person. He's a thing. He's some, He's everywhere. I've spoken to you. Or yeah. Like I don't think I've ever had God mark. speak to me. Yeah. I get that. I just, that's just but interesting. I feel a presence. I never feel alone, which is kind of crazy. You never feel alone? No. Then why do you get scared doing things because you feel alone? I don't because be I can alone feel the this. presence and I don't know if it's God or if it's some, something else. It creeps me out that I feel presences. Presences. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, let's go. Let's, 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 we'll get into that later. Let's just talk about more people's uh, beliefs because that's interesting. Someone said, change my mind after my dad died. I think they watch over us, which is kind of weird because I feel like when people do die, you do feel that. Like, but then is it just your mind? That's the thing. On you for a way to cope with grief. Right. This is what I can go. I could talk about this fucking shit forever. Like grief and stuff like that. And like turning it into comfort. I guess that is true. You can have these experiences that are from pure like grief and like not PTSD, but such like tra- traumatic experiences where you end up believing in things because your your brain can't actually comprehend what yeah. happened. So you have to give it another. Like a lot of people's brains, they will have like so traumatic will happen, and mm-hmm. you can't just a lot of people can't just fathom that's just happened. So they yeah. have to pass on to something else. Like give it like you know like, like mm-hmm. Joe from you, he had to create Reese. Spoiler <laughs> yeah. alert! Spoiler alert! Yeah. Season, it was season four. Spoiler season alert! Yeah. You know you know Reese and that he had to create that figment of his imagination because he couldn't actually hold on to his trauma because it's so bad. Mm-hmm. That's what people do a great, and obviously a different way. They believe in like God or they'd be like, oh, they're watching over us because it makes them feel good. And I, I'm, I'm all there for it, man. Yeah, same. I don't see why you can't, well, like people can't just believe No, I would never shit on anyone. Nah, I think it's really cool. But it's also sad. Someone said, God, so many dad comments. My dad thinks it's like an off button and nothing happens. I do think about that though, to be fair. I think, is it just... But then I've experienced too many things for me to be like, I I know something else is there. I don't know what it is, but it can't just be. I fucking hope so, gone. man. I just I just think, what's the point of living? Like, there is literally no point of living. And I know there we should be so fortunate that we're one in a billion to be on this planet. Fuck that shit, man. If I'm gonna die at the end of like eighty years and everything that I've worked for, every all like my family, just, I don't even get to see my family. Every, do you know what I mean, what's the fucking point? Well, then it comes to play like, what is the meaning of life? What, there isn't there literally the is isn't a meaning of life what's it's, the point the meaning of life is however you want to live your life and yeah. that's it like i feel like people need to stop deeping life too much and also when you realize how many people are on this planet and how many galaxies there are and how big the milky ways are it's scary it's actually scary if you even just being on a plane and looking down and seeing like all the houses like you can't even see the people in it like you are so tiny compared to the universe you're an ant that's not to say you don't mean anything but no but it is true though like if you died like you're not gonna nothing's gonna change no it, your world, the world will still, still continue on. yeah the sun will still rise and the sun will still set. Uh-huh. It's just weird that you are just forgotten. It's like that Kevin Hart thing he said in an interview. He was like, life still goes on without you. Whether you get up or not, time doesn't stop for nobody or something. Yeah, know. and Tom Hedgeston said, um, you have two lives. You, your second life begins when you realise you only have one. Because then you like, shit. Yeah. I've got to live. But then it, that also is like crazy because then you have pressure of living yeah, that life yeah yeah and I've, i don't think life needs to be like that i think you just got to enjoy it if you enjoy every single day of your life i feel like you're living life all right i i feel like being like oh my god i've got to live you're not living then i feel i i can i, I agree with the sense of yeah you should do you should try plan things and you know go traveling as much as you can and all of that but don't stress out about it like life is more than just seeing new things i feel like your day-to-day life is the most important there's a book called the power of now which is a a book that teaches you how to be in the presence Mm -hmm. because tomorrow never exists it's always the now and like the future Mm -hmm. is not happening yet even though you think or you know like hey tomorrow i've got work that's true and that is in the future yes but you don't have work right now so why are you thinking about it 
Mm-hmm. And it's so hard to not, like you're allowed to, the book basically says you're allowed to feel your emotions. You're allowed to make your emotions present. So don't just think, you no, know, if you're worried about tomorrow, you're allowed to feel worried. You're allowed mm-hmm. to feel worried, but know that, that you are feeling worried. And then be like, okay, well, I feel worried, but that's that's not happening now. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm aware I'm worried, but what can I do now to have fun? Or what can I do to relieve that stress or worry? And then you start living, like, you just become way more productive. You feel you don't think about the future too far ahead because it's just you don't know i feel like so many people would benefit from that including myself because my main problem is overthinking but we'll get into that but... yeah we're going off tangents but i think this is a very passionate subject for both me and you well, yeah so i think this, this is going to be a very saying. chaotic episode and a lot of just like what the fuck are they saying but hopefully at least one sentence or like a little topic might make you think more. That's the whole point of this episode. Mm-hmm. So this episode's a really deep episode. Normally we have a bit of comedy in it. Normally we have comedy and deep, but this is just pure deep. I feel like this is something that this is just our thoughts, our thoughts. coming out. And we don't really can't we can't speak about this on TikTok. It just won't. It just won't work. It's not our thing. Mm-hmm. We can't do it on Instagram. This is like our platform where we can feel like we can speak. And also you guys listen. You guys give us a time of day to listen. So this is going to be it. This is a deep episode. Someone said, you meet your past loved ones and reunite with them till you're all ready to start a new life. So you have to wait till everyone in your family dies and then... No, dickhead. What? Because your kids will have kids and the kids will have kids. Well, and then the... what does she mean then? I, I don't... That's what I'm saying. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. <laughs> and I, I, but I, I'm not shitting on that. Like, cool. But I also think when, she, when, you, said, when you read that out loud, it's better. I thought to myself, well, what age are you going to be when they die? Like they're going to be so when they die they go to heaven or wherever you reunite and they're what 86 when they died in that condition but if i met my grandma uh-huh. after she's passed in heaven and she has dementia because she said that's when she died she ain't gonna fucking know shit she's not gonna have dementia in the afterlife James. but she's gonna be the age she died in the afterlife no <laughs> no i think you go to i think you go to your uh best stage in your life so you're gonna you go to your younger so self. the majority of people obviously if you don't unfortunately pass young but it would be like everyone's gonna be 25 just kicking about 25 yeah i think so yo james what's up bro yeah, you're like, who the, the fuck, fuck is that <laughs> it's <laughs> your great granddaddy son <laughs> is it someone ain't, someone ain't right <laughs> um someone said i think there's an afterlife so you can look out for your loved ones when you're gone like a like a guardian angel yeah. you become a guardian angel for future people in your family i guess what if you're not a good person what if your grandparents aren't someone you want to be as your guardian angels what the fuck happens to them what if they don't want to be one that's Where the thing they go- maybe they just float around and just don't do anything that's why i genuinely think that film disney from disney or pixar soul it's on a summit, man. It is on They're something. way too big of a corporation and business to like just fling that out from nowhere. Yeah. That is that has to be something. Like that has well, to be real. The thing is, before watching that film, that is something I believed in. And that film just kind of like made it all clear for me because I could never really work out what I believed in, like in a spiritual way, because obviously I believe in God and all of that, but then the whole soul thing, you think, oh my God, when when I don't, where the hell does my soul go? So can soul you goal? believe in God and be spiritual? Well, I think so, because that that's what I am. Because you're believing in things that's just not God as well? Well, we'll read a few more out. Okay, sorry, I'm getting, right, you just read them out, because I'm just going <laughs> to... I just question. I love to question, man. I should yeah. be in a debate, man. We leave energy everywhere we go, and when we die, our body goes, but our energy stays. Why? Why? Um... What so what? No, that kind of makes sense. I think that also makes sense with if people experience ghostly kind of stuff happening in their house, paranormal activity, because maybe that's just your energy being left there. Say if you die in your house, right? And then your family still lives there and I don't know, something knocks off the shelf and they're like, oh, that's so-and-so. Maybe they're not... That's just Maybe that's just your energy still like in the air well we're all made of carbon isn't it? everything in the world is made of carbon uh-huh. so maybe but then everything should fucking move <laughs> the whole fucking world everything should be shaking <laughs> the whole time you know what i'm saying <laughs> the mic should be shaking right now but i don't know man i don't know until i die it's actually scary it's just concerning i think we get reborn but we don't remember 
However, we take with us past experiences and bad things that have happened, which creates our fears and phobias in our current self. E.g. drowned in the past life, you would, you would have a fear of water in your next life, etc. You know what? I, I, I probably, everything that's been said, I kind of agree with that. That's the thing. I, I believe in everything in a way. And then I'm like, fuck, what do I actually believe? I don't know. Is there a religion to believe in all religions? Like, surely, <laughs> like, who the fuck? Someone coined that shit, because I believe oh in it. Oh my god, there was a... There was... Is it Life of Pi? I think it was Life of Pi. He studied every religion. I think it was. Or it was another film called Lion. Either way, really good film. Life of Pi, the one where he gets on a boat with a tiger. Yeah. He's, and he's... Uh, yeah. Whilst trying to tame a tiger on a boat, he learns every religion. No, before he got on the boat, silly... Oh. I didn't watch the um, film. But with this whole like past life thing, I have a birthmark, for example, and people believe that that comes from um, past lives. Like, that's where you died. Apparently. I've got a birthmark on my cock, so what the <laughs> fuck's happened to me? How did I die? <laughs> maybe a lady gnawed in it a bit too hard. Yeah, maybe. Gave the guac guac 3000 to the next level. Yeah, oh, mate, if I die, that's the way to go. That's the way to fucking go. <laughs> well, if I bit your knob off. No, nah, if you were just, if you sucked the soul out of me. <laughs> <laughs> i feel like there's so many things that you can believe and agree with but then in in my heart in my soul i feel like with me because i've been brought up christian catholic i actually don't know the difference same i don't know if i've been brought up christian or catholic same <laughs> Literally. we both had the same thing but we both don't know what it is well i think it was a catholic church so I guess I'm Catholic. I've had my Holy Communion. I didn't have my um. What's the other thing after that? I don't know. Uh, I didn't do it because I felt I I didn't feel the need to do it. Um, you guys probably know what I'm on about. Um, don't think anybody knows what you're on about. It's basically it's not. It's the next step from Holy Communion. You do Holy Communion when you're about twelve, and then when you're older like around 16 you do the other thing which is like holy communion but for older kids to basically say like i want to be a part of the church okay. but i didn't do that because i also feel quite spiritual too and i always go back and forth with these with my two beliefs because i believe in heaven and hell but then i also don't at the same time and then i sometimes i just believe kind of like the film soul from disney i just believe we might all just be spirits and we just kind of float in the air and I believe in energy and all of that. I don't think there's a rule book to life. So that's where I kind of have a problem with the Bible because I don't follow the Bible. I guess when I was a kid, um, maybe I felt the need to follow it more because that's all I knew. Mm -hmm. But for me, there's things in the Bible which people take that I don't agree with and all of that. So I just don't think there's a guidebook to life, right? And there's so many things that have happened um, in my life to make me believe that spir spirituality is real. Mm -hmm. Guardian angels are real. Um, Give us an example then. All of that just... For example, the other day, I was thinking about... Um, an iPod. I don't know why it came into my head. I think we were thinking... I, I was thinking about old iPhones and then my mind went to oh my god iPods are they still a thing and then I remembered the first ever iPod which is what I've got here um and I was thinking about like oh my god where is that like I want to could I even know how to work it like how do you even work this thing long story short I haven't seen this in about 10 years um and about a week later my sister sends me a photo of this ipod my younger sister Tallulah, and on the back of it it says isabella with love from daddy <laughs> and that was literally found like a few days after my um birthday which is kind of crazy that's wild so when things like this happen i'm like okay did you ever mention it to your sister that you were looking for that no so it just happened. It, it just appeared in her room that's so weird man yeah so that's kind of crazy. And also, I believe in this whole spiritual energy, you know, you, you look over. I believe in, like, looking over your family and stuff like that. Because there was one time, this was, like, a year and a bit ago, I was walking around town, and I could literally hear my dad's voice in my head saying, go to see this woman now. And obviously, when you hear something like that, you think you're going crazy. Like, oh, maybe that's what I want to hear. 
then when I get to this lady, she literally says, he told you to come here, didn't he? Didn't he? And I was like, what the fuck? Like, this is actually So she's like crazy. a me- Who's this lady? You never said who this lady is. Oh. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. She just talks and just, you just think, yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, cool. What the fuck? There was this tarot card lady. Oh, there we go. I thought so. In the Brighton streets. She's kind of just like on the street, basically. Kind of in the lanes. She's got this little umbrella going on. Yeah. And um, she does readings for you and she mm-hmm. used tarot cards but this was more than just tarot cards this we weren't even really looking at the cards really she was just saying all this stuff to me and i was like you could only say this like how else would you know this so it's like a medium kind of she like could see she said yeah stuff, dead. she was like saying stuff that i have heard in my brain and also this relates to when you said well when you go to heaven and you see all your family mm. how do they look are they old are they whatever I think they are young because of what she said to me. She said, oh yeah, he looks um, he looks quite young now, probably like 25. What has, the fuck? Has curly hair going on, playing on a stage. And my dad used to be in a band. So that was the time that he used to be doing all of that shit. I've never spoke to this lady before in my life. Do you know what? So that's crazy. That's kind of mad. And I think if you go to heaven or hell, like in heaven, can you communicate still? Or... Do you know what I mean? Just well, so I guess you questions. communicate in both ways. When you're in hell, you can communicate in like paranormal, like, but in, in, more in a bad energy, I guess, more in an a- angry way. When you're in heaven, you can guide them, but I guess you're less present. Because being very present in spiritual reasons can be very scary because you just don't know what's going on. So I mm-hmm. guess that's more of like a when you're in heaven and you want to communicate to your loved ones down there, you would ha- you would do it more in a guiding way to not scare them. But when you're in hell, you can only communicate in not in a helpful way. And just by being present in the home, that's when you think you've got yeah. ghosts in the house. Maybe. Because to me, when I think of hell, I think of you're locked up away, but maybe some demons escape. And that's when you get all the really scary stuff like the conjuring and all of that. Yeah, well, that that's based on a true story. And that's fucking terrifying. So I just, yeah, I'm the same with like spirit. I don't know. For me, this is all very new to me. And I don't know what to believe. And I don't really care what other people think of Mm -hmm. me and what I believe. So like, you know, we used to back in the day, like we said, ages ago, spiritual, like rocks and crystals and stuff for spirituality. And what I say to people is that like, okay, you might not believe that's absolutely cool. But if it's a six pound rock that helps me get through the day and makes me believe that I'm going to achieve what I can believe, uh, what I'm going to achieve, then I don't mind, even if it's like, what do you call it? Like a placebo effect. I'm happy with that. Cause it's literally yeah, a six clear rock. if it's making you feel good, then what's the problem? And they're good house ornament. Do you know what I'm saying? They look pretty. <laughs> like, so I'm not going to, you know, and I like that stuff. And I feel like it's good to kind of feel like you're not trapped on your, like, in your own thoughts that you have like, fucking hell, man. Shut time! Not for you though. Not for me because I did have food poisoning yesterday. All right. So I don't even like origin. or- origins. 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 Don't like origins. I don't like or- oranges. Jizz. I don't like jizz. I don't like oranges. Jizz. Oranges. Jizz. Um. This is yeah. This is a lot. That's the last of the tequila. Yeah, Sorry, tequila. I didn't mean to speak over you. But you do it all the time. So thank you. <laughs> and I hate oranges, as you guys know. They look like a fucking. Brain. That's a tangerine, actually. I don't like oranges either. Tangerines are nice and sweet, and they just go down the throat so nicely. Ah! That was... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. That was ugly. Yeah, well, I've just built... Oh, that is fucking lethal, mate. I can't get any juice out of that. <laughs> anyway. No, I believe in the spirituality stuff, and I didn't really believe it until the day that my grandma passed away. It was a really weird day, really out of the blue. So, you know, I was just... I was going to have a shower. I went for a shower, and I looked at my phone... And then I saw that I had like 10 missed calls from my mum. And I'm like, well, that's not normal because if she can't contact me, she normally knows I'm busy and she won't try, but she was really trying to get to me. So I called her back and then she was just in tears. And then I automatically thought my granddad died mm-hmm. because he has cancer. Yeah. So I was like, oh my God, what the fuck? That's so sh- that was like, that, I just, I always, I just automatically knew, okay, it's about gramps, but it wasn't, it was about granny. And I was like, it just hit me. I was like, there's no way that's even a thing mm-hmm. uh, which just boot me out and then i spoke to mum for a bit hung up the phone and i called my sister and we you know we spoke to trevor see if we we're all right and stuff and she lives in america and uh so we're calling and talking 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 and then in our old flat we had an intercom a doorbell rang and i'm like okay sorry one second walk over and i'm still on the phone and i press the buzzer i'm like hello hello no one's there and I'm like, okay. And I walk to the window because I can see over the balcony who's at the door, the main door to get in. Mm-hmm. Nobody's there. 
Mum's fucking weird. And then I look up and literally on eye level was just a feather mm-hmm. that just wouldn't move. Just literally in the wind, but just stuck still, wouldn't move. Yeah. I was like, Siobhan, <laughs> there is a feather in front of me and it's not moving. She's like, what? I'm like, it was w-. And then when I mentioned that, whew, went away. I went, oh, that's a bit weird. And when I mentioned that to like my mum and Siobhan and stuff, then we all started noticing feathers everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like where feathers shouldn't be. So, you know, we're in Birmingham doing talk fest or whatever, and we're in this industrial estate, and then suddenly a feather dropped down below. Yeah. Me, and I was like, bro, that there's no birds around. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just really weird. And then, like, you know, I'd be standing outside, and I'd be stressed, and I'd just see a little feather come across me. And that's like me thinking, like, that's my grandma just being present in a mm-hmm. form of a feather because she used to love birds, and, you know, mum loves birds and stuff. So I think that's, you know, that's what I believe, and hence why I've got these tattoos of a feather for my grandma. And I've got loads of feathers behind the cameras here that were my grandma's feathers. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. That's maybe this is like a thing that I believe to cope with what happened and maybe just to make me feel like she isn't gone. But, but I don't deal these... with grief well, though. But because... also, can I just say, yeah. those things that happen, I get that it could be maybe a coping mechanism. But because they're so random, it's like, well, how is that really just happening? Yeah, but maybe you. I'm just noticing things that, you, that happen around you but you just don't notice because you're not thinking of that do you know what I'm saying like mm-hmm. maybe if that was another day I would have been too fixated maybe on just like where's my fucking parcel rather than like yeah I would look up and I'd be like that's a feather because what if it was just there yeah already? yeah and this is me like I can't I don't know why I always feel not guilty but I just don't know I just don't feel like I'm allowed to believe that because it's not right which is not the case I don't think there is a right or wrong I think I could just believe whatever but like I said I don't really deal with grief well because in my head, I'm just thinking, they're still alive. I'm just too busy to see them. Mm-hmm. We just don't contact anymore. That's how I deal with it, which is not the best thing. Yeah. I just go, oh, yeah, Granny's still down the road. She's just, I'm just too busy to see her. And I don't ever think they've gone. And that's like a weird way I cope. But I know it's weird and like spirituality. And I hope there is something up there so we can all be together again. But then what concerns me, obviously, if you're with your family when you pass, like, what about us? Obviously, we become a family. Mm-hmm. But what if you go to like, your actual immediate family and I go to my immediate family we'll never see each other again I don't I don't think that's the case I think you go to your husband shortly well because yeah you would think so especially if you're religious as well you know marriage is a religious thing isn't it yeah in a sense I feel like surely that ties the knot in heaven you know what I mean if we're both going to heaven surely we'll see each other there but I want to know what determines as when you go up to heaven you see your family what is the family is it the I people in your life that you, you call love. family. Yeah. yeah. But then they love people as well. <laughs> well, I don't know the ins and outs, no, but James. This is what makes you, I'm just thinking. I I'm think, just, I this think, is what I this think is about. If we all went to heaven, it'd be your family and my family, I guess, because if we get married. Okay, but then let's say your sister gets married to someone else. Well, then it'll be their family. Yeah, yeah, then you'll just literally have everyone in the one big fucking room. Yeah. So I'm trying to think, like, well, I'm not trying to heaven? shit. Yeah, but I'm not trying to shit on the idea. I'm, <laughs> I just need to be logical. Like, I like to be spiritual, but I like yeah. to be logical because I, if I can logically believe in spirituality, I'm calm. Mm-hmm. I'll be, that's how I believe. Like, I can't think of like, well, when I die, I just go up there and I'll see my well, family. Because not... I'm thinking, who yeah, is yeah, the family? Yeah. And if I can say to myself, right, well, I'll go here and I see these people, then I'll believe it because like, it logistically makes sense. And mm. it's so weird that I want to be logical with something like call it spirituality because <laughs> you can't be, but that's just who yeah. I am. Yeah. I need to be very like, this is definitive. I think, I wouldn't say I'm religious. Maybe I need to stop saying I'm religious and spiritual. Maybe I just believe in afterlife, I guess. I just believe in... There must be a term for people that are spiritual energy. but also like religious. Because, you know, I, I would... don't know what I am, guys. Yeah, I don't even know what I am. And we're probably not using the right terminology, so bear with us. We're just kind of saying what we feel, you know what I'm saying? But, but uh, going back to that, if we had kids, would you raise them religious? Would you think... Would you consider yourself religious enough to be like, I want to raise my kids religious or would you just let them do their own thing? Because I think about this sometimes because, I don't know, I feel like me being raised Catholic, Christian, whatever the fuck I was raised, I I feel like it was quite beneficial for me as a child. But then again, I would never want to just raise a kid religious if I don't fully believe that. Well, the thing is, I was brought up the same like catholic christian whatever the fuck i was baptized had that candle i think it's christianity Mm -hmm. i went to a catholic school 
And then I went to a Christ of England, Church of England, Christ of England, what the fuck? Church of England Oh, school. I didn't go to Church of England. Um, and then obviously I did like the pilgrim puppeteering stuff. So like yeah. I have, I have like religion from as soon as I was born, I went to church all the time mm-hmm. to about maybe like year seven, really. And it stopped because it's just, I think it was more my dad that brought me up to be like that. Cause I remember my great grandma being quite religious. Um, she was Irish. And I think she went to church mm-hmm. all the time. And was very quite a holy person. But then again, like, I don't think it's affected me in a bad or a good way. I just think, well, I didn't really have my own thoughts when I was a kid. You don't really have, yeah. your, you kind of can't just carve your own life. You have to be carved for you a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then when you get to a decision, you're old enough. I personally think that if we have a kid, well, some schools are really good and some of them are like Catholic schools and you have to have be baptized. That's how a lot of kids get into these schools. Yeah. Their mum and pe- mum and dad aren't religious, yeah, but they they're just, getting baptized yeah. so they can go to a good, good school. Yeah. And that's like what happens. I'm not saying I would do that. I don't know what I would do. But I don't, I, I don't think I putting do on a religion on a kid is that bad. Especially if they're, you know, enjoying like going to church. They might find that more of a community rather than like... That's what I'm saying. It's not like actual religion forced no, down your throat. No, that's not what... Because religion was never forced down my throat either. Like I... I was told God is a thing, you know. I'd go to like liturgy as a kid, you know, where all the all the adults would go to church, and then the kids have their own little thing going. Yeah, on. yeah, yeah. So from a young age, I was told that like, you know, about Jesus and all of that stuff. I went to a religious um, primary school, secondary school, um, and I feel like growing up, I think it was quite nice to know. Also, I think it's just positive. Um, I think it gives positive affirmations, I guess, to a child because if you're telling them that they are perfect and God created you and he created you in this perfect way, there's nothing like wrong with you, I feel like that's kind of a good thing to tell a kid. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And how do I word this? I just think it's nice a nice routine as well. Like every Sunday you go to church. Well, like I said, it's more thing. of a community thing than I think what it actually means to be Christian. Yeah, and just knowing that there is someone up there looking after you. I think when I was a kid, that did bring me comfort. And if I was struggling in school or some, I don't know, wherever the hell a six-year-old goes through, sometimes I would pray. And I feel like that's really comforting to have at any age. And I think... That's true learning that as a kid i don't know i th- i I, th- I just think it was really beneficial did your school sell those like um those beads mary beads yes and you sell them you buy them and i had like i had a jaded one because uh-huh. that's what i got my dad to buy it for me i had like those like bands with like the cross on them and jesus face uh-huh. you remember those like made yeah. out of wood oh my god yes yeah. that was the fashion that was the fashion that was <laughs> the fashion so i had those and stuff but like i used to like yeah i think my mum and dad were going for a divorce i think like i obviously subconsciously prayed or whatever mm-hmm. i think it's good and I, I used to be in a choir so i used to obviously sing hymns and i had yeah. to audition for that i was like year five though so it didn't really count i was gonna get in anyway I had the high pitch you know what i'm saying because i was just my balls haven't dropped yet so i could hit them <laughs> high notes but no i don't know for me, like pilgrim puppeteering, I know everyone takes piss. It's all Christian puppeteer. For me, it was just like just I was chilling. I was, that's the only time I could really chill with my friends after school. Yeah. Because I just wasn't allowed out. Mm-hmm. So that was a way of being <laughs> in curriculum. Yeah. But seeing Doing my friends and yeah. eating cake at the beginning, like we eating went to cake. a church. Churches are beautiful. I grew up in the countryside, and I think a church is actually just beautiful. Churches are mm-hmm. beautiful. Whether you think, like a lot of people think, like churches are potentially built with like not like good money oh, really? and like laundering and things like that yeah like, like on the what was that show that we watched um vikings oh ozarks vikings. ozarks ozarks and yeah. it was like money laundering money laundering. but obviously that, that's not all real but people no. believe that like sometimes that's why people don't like religion so much because it's like a good like cause they get paid bank yeah like in America, donations you give, huge. you give 10 percent of your yearly wages don't you to the church to the and church, then that's kind of you mad. kind of pay the What's it, the pastor? Yeah, because in my fat, grandma's fat church, son. they've got chandeliers, they've got bloody. It felt oh, like mate, they it's had huge, um, under what's it? Under floor heating. Under floor heating. Yeah, it man, was that nice. church was. That's not like English churches. Yeah. The church I went to was cold. It's freezing, isn't it? It's a yeah. stone in that. But I don't know. For me, it was weird, and I know a lot of people don't like. Really, this is not us trying to convert because we don't even know what we are. Yeah, I think it's also because back in the day when I was younger, my mum was a bit more strict with 
going to church all the time and all of that stuff but now I know my mum still does believe in God and she, you know she prays and you know you <laughs> even in the way she's like pray before dinner and all of that yeah, thank yeah, you yeah. God did and, that a lot in America yeah, oh yeah because my grandma's heavily religious but I didn't mind that you know I genuinely didn't I don't I j- didn't mind that which is weird I think it's cute but I felt I comfort think, in that yeah there is comfort it's so fucking weird man like when we go to church for Easter we went to church for, for like on Christmas day or Christmas Eve well we're going to Easter this year yeah, to me that's wild we're going to Easter this year we're going to church that? this year um, well you, you've got to, you've actually got to work on yeah so I'm not there because we're going away on the 8th so not basically guys my mum loves Easter yeah. and like I said she's quite loosely religious now so we go like on the big celebrations yeah. where people are a bit <laughs> people judge because that's oh yeah not the right they've never seen us in that church before we rock up on Easter like alright guys <laughs> yeah. Easter Christmas What's the other one? I don't bloody know. But, Halloween. Uh, my mum's American, so she goes all out for Easter. And we do a traditional yearly Easter egg hunt on Easter. But because me and James are away, we have to do it on Good Friday instead. But I'm not there. But you're not there, so she's probably going to... I don't know how you're going to break that news. Uh, if I don't do this, I'll... your daughter's going to have to pay for rent again this month. <laughs> do you want that? <laughs> no, but it's... I don't know. I feel like this is a really... Uh, do you know what? Let's just move on because I think we could talk about this forever. Yeah, we could talk about this forever. I don't and it's think... a hard topic to talk about as well. It's hard to get your words out. Raising kids religiously, let's just sum it up. I would, I'm not saying I am, I'm not against it. I would maybe have only if I become Christian yes, myself. Yes, that's what I mean. Like if I ended up in 20, 15 years time, 10 years time becoming like somehow Christian. And we start going to start church. Going to church. Then of course I would. But if I'm not, then I'm not going to put a religion on a kid because I feel like it, in 10 years time, it wouldn't matter anyway. if I'm not following it properly, like why What's would I? What's the point? You can't even talk to your own kid about it. And it's just, I don't, you know, I don't want that to be like a thing. No. I feel like in this day and age, it's just not, religion's just not as big as it used to be. Yeah. I find that mad. Isn't not like it? I'd care because I just don't, but I just find that fact in itself just crazy. I feel like it's just slowly fading away. Well, I think religion's dying. Yeah. Which I think is from wild. It's kind of. I mean, maybe it's not. Maybe we're just not around people that are religious because, mate, fucking America, everyone's holy there. Like proper. I guess. Christian. Yeah. Because remember, we saw those teenagers in the church, and they were like, I, I couldn't believe my eyes. I didn't know they yeah. exist. I thought it was in the Actually, movies. Actually, what am I on about? I've literally been on a pilgrimage, and all of those people there are heavily, heavily. Linked. That's a whole other story. No, but, I don't think I could even get into that. <laughs> no, that's that's for another day because this is more just like talking about our thing. But let's go on to like being scared of dying because I genuinely am terrified to die. Like I hate. I can't See, even think about it. You are, and I'm not. But I want to hear your reasonings for why you're scared. So the reason why I'm scared is because one, really, I'm not, I don't, I'm not enjoying my life right now. And I don't know if that actually makes a difference because if I was was enjoying my life, maybe I'd be scared to die because I don't want to end, like, leave this life. But I don't want to, I want to die knowing that I've done everything and achieved everything that I want to achieve and be proud of myself and be like, wow, I've had a good life. And also like set my family up for a good life like you know kids and stuff i just don't think that obviously i'm not there yet because i'm young still i'm just too harsh myself but i just feel like i don't know i don't want to die (laughs) and i'm scared of not being forgotten because i don't really care about that because Mm -hmm. you know people will talk about me like family wise or your granddad but what i'm not scared about that but it's more like how you're just there one day you go to sleep and then you never see like like, like, I'm scared more of like if we get married obviously and I die before you you're on your own yeah. I'd rather you die first that sounds so horrible but it's not but I don't want you to be alone nice at the same time well no because I, I see like my grandma she was on her own after Anthony died and you know it was difficult for her you never know I might find another sweet little no you fucking sweet won't sweet little boy no you won't boy oh man, no, it's man. Not, it's not. oh no but look but if you do cool but i'm gonna make your life hell if i if i'm a spirit if i'm a spiritual god got up there and you get (laughs) another man i'm making his life fucking hell mate (laughs) no but on a real i feel like i would rather die 
I'd rather you die first. Not because of selfishness, because I want to live longer. I just don't want you to be alone. Okay, well, can you take that back? Because you're going to give me anxiety. <sighs> I can't say I want anything. to live a long, fulfilled life, okay? I take it back. Thank you. Jokes. James! I'm joking. I can handle myself, okay? You can't. Guess... You can't do your tax, mate. You'd be <laughs> fucked without me. Do I have to do that at that age? No, because you can retire. Yeah, exactly. I'll be calm. I'll be Gucci. I'll be doing my knitting and all of that jazz, whatever an old person does. I just also don't want to... I'm scared of growing old as well. Like, just sitting there shitting myself on the sofa watching daytime TV. Just, like, kill me off now. But like, do you know what? I I don't mind that. I feel like I live like fuck. an old person anyway. And you I just feel don't, like... Cause you don't have that pain like an old person No, has. that's not what I mean. I mean... I love doing old people things. And I feel like once I'm an old person, I can do that without feeling guilty. I'm not scared of dying, but what I'm scared of is regret. And sometimes I feel like I'm not living the life I'm supposed to live. And I always have this battle of going back and forth with myself. For example, I might not want to go out drinking with my friends. And I... I'm having so much more fun in bed, tucked up with tea, watching my favourite show. I feel calm and content. But then I'm like, Isabella, what are you doing? You can do this when you're old. Do it now. Go out with your friends. Go drinking. But then the problem with that is I don't like drinking because the next day I have major anxiety and I just feel like shit. And then I'm just stuck in bed all day because I'm hungover. And then I think there is more to life than drinking, Isabella. You can hang out with your friends and do more than that. Mm -hmm. But I feel like... At this age, we just forget that you can do other things rather than just going out. No, but I also believe, right, that drinking and stuff, and you, not everyone has to drink alcohol, it's fine, I don't care. I'm happy to have it and happy not to have it. But I don't like when people go, right, I'm going to drink tonight and I'm going to, I only drink to get absolutely fucked. But that's me. But that's where I think maybe, maybe your problem lies where you can't just enjoy a casual drink because it always turns into let's go to fucking <laughs> shoosh, let's go to prison, let's get absolutely wasted. You oh, when have I ever like been shoosh. to shoosh, James, no, in the last like, fucking come, four no, but years? Come on, like what I'm saying, you go to prison, you go revs, you, you do all these things. Well, actually last week I did get quite drunk, but then I went home. I didn't do the whole clubbing thing. No, but that's fine. It's um, a lot better for me, actually. That's what I'm saying. Do You can still, just because maybe the way, with anxiety and stuff, it's more like not, that you drank it's what happened whilst you were drinking yeah 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 you can have that can happen to you whilst you're sober but obviously you got more of a strong mind but you can like me and my mates we go to the pub sometimes we have two drinks we go home and but it's just a social aspect to like i i we, yeah, me course. and my mates play fifa now at his house and then we also play football now every weekend that shit's so good and i've always wanted to do it without drink like go go see my friends without drinking all the time mm. but when it's summer and a fucking cold bevy on the sand yeah i like, yeah oh. i do like that yeah but you it's don't nice. stop being so harsh on yourself in terms of like oh i could read a book when i'm 80 you i made... don't know why my brain is like that I <laughs> like get i feel it. guilty doing those sorts of things i don't know why it's so silly but once you start in the presence you don't think of the future man i know because i'm not I'm not gonna like, try to cause your anxiety or anything but what if you do die in like 10 years time what if like, your friends yeah. die in 10 years time what you got to do is just live life now what do you want to do right now what do you want to do right now just i think, think my fear is not having memories that's also another thing because i saw this mm -hmm. tiktok and it's like if you just stay in bed and not do much you're not going to have any memories to think about when you're when you're older and also what scares me is because i spend so much time on my phone like even when i'm out with friends if i'm on my phone or you know filming something or doing this i'm like is my memory just me filming or is it the actual moment and sometimes i just get scared that i'm on my phone constantly like last week my screen time was six hours six hours of my day i'm on my phone how am i going to remember my life like my phone is my life at the moment that is horrible but it's your job it, yeah, but that's what's that's kind of crazy. But then your job has allowed you to do things like this. Yeah, that's true. And also have be quite financially okay at this Yeah, and I guess if I was doing like a nine to five, I guess then... You're not making any memories either. Yeah, so I, I think it all depends. I think my brain just overthinks I think this generation is too hard on themselves. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing either. I think that just back in the day, social media wasn't a thing. And like just when the internet just became a thing with the generation above us they're like you can't be on the internet or like, because it's all new you don't know what you don't know what happens it's all scary but with us social media is new you don't want to waste your life on social media but life is social media which yeah, you hate to say it but it is crazy. and you listen to this on social media we're doing this 
on social media. Like everything. It's a part of your life. It's just part of your life now. And you've just got to learn how to balance it. Whether you like it or not, it is there. Unless you want to become Amish or shit <laughs> like that, it, social media is everywhere. Whether you look up on a billboard and you see something that's social media based yeah. everywhere. Like you just got to realize like, what do you want to do? Don't f- fuck your friends, mate. Because you can always get new friends. And I'm not saying that as like a bad way. Like fuck them all. But you go through i've gone through different groups of friendships because you change you move places oh, no, yeah so you want to do everything for yourself yeah and if you want to read that book tonight in a year's time nobody's gonna remember oh do you remember when isabella stayed in and read a book they, no it, they that's just not don't. what i mean it's more like i don't know when you're with your friends like you never know what ha- what could happen that night and you could it could just you could but that's the unknown you don't know yeah and you're not going to know until you do it or you don't. I think I'm, what I'm also scared about is my mental health affecting my whole life. I feel like it definitely is getting better. Mm-hmm. But every day I have anxiety and every day I feel that pit in my stomach of just feeling like something bad's going to happen. And then I also have that feeling of stress. Just every day stupid stress. I feel like we both don't handle our stress very well. Well, we're getting better at it. You definitely are. And I'm I feel like better. sometimes I worry that that's going to be like an everyday thing. Because I've been going to therapy for quite a while now. And I know it has been getting better. But it's been t- it's taken quite a while for it to get better. No, I want to cut you off right there. Stop. You analyse everything about yourself. <laughs> and you're always negative about it. The fact is, flip it around. You've gone to therapy for so long. Yeah. That's a commitment that people won't take because it's scary. It's, it's embar- People think it's embarrassing to go to therapy. Isn't, you know, to be emotional, to feel like you're that weak to go to therapy because you need help from an external factor. That's not the case with therapy. Yeah. It's someone, it's, it's, a bra- it's brave. It's, you know, it's, I think it's very full of courage. So you're saying to yourself, oh, it's taken me 10 weeks or whatever to get to therapy you've done 10 weeks or something I know, it's difficult i think i just get frustrated i don't know why i know i know i'm being hard on myself but what i'm trying no, you're to not say just being is hard, you're being extremely hard on yourself i think what i'm trying to say is i'm not scared of dying i'm scared of having these things ruin your life ruin my whole life yes but they're not in a way but i don't let no, them ruin my life but like they but do when they don't at the same time your thoughts are I know it's hard because I'm not a therapist and I'm not uh. giving you advice. I'm not giving anybody advice here. But you just saying to yourself, I don't want my mental health to ruin my day is going to ruin your day. Like you giving it the time to even become a, a, a thing in your life. Yeah, but it's there no matter what. Even if I say that or not, those thoughts still come into my head every single day. But being in the presence, you're thinking of the future that hasn't arrived yet. Yeah, I know. I want to, trust me, I want to be I know. in the present. That's why you go into therapy. This, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like, I'm not giving you advice, but I, I really recommend reading The Power of Now because it does make you believe like there, there are so many external factors that can, like, can shape your life, whether you like it or not family dying you have no control over that and that can send you flying right Mm -hmm. but you've got there is i know it sounds easy but you just gotta learn but it's like the whole point of being the presence you you it it teaches you you're allowed to feel the Mm -hmm. way you feel and if you feel like your mental health is going to ruin your life you can feel that but the whole point is not let it drag you down you don't fight it what I'm saying is don't fight that feeling. You thinking, oh shit, my mental health is going to ruin my life. I don't want all that. Oh God, the anxiety. The anxiety. Go, mm-hmm. I feel that. And that's okay. You fighting it, you can't fight something you've created Yeah. in your head. Yeah. It's just not going to work. Yeah. But you going to therapy obviously is helping you, but don't be harsh on yourself because it actually <laughs> pains me to see that you're negative about yourself yeah no but i know i am a lot better like it seems really harsh what's coming out of my mouth now that's my just my biggest fear like if like it, my anxiety and all of that is so much better now and it definitely is livable of course it's livable and i get through like it it's not always it's not always hell it's not always like i can still do fun things with my life and i still do do loads of cool stuff and i don't let it hold me back Mm -hmm. i think my fear is just having to deal with that feeling anyway no i get that but But, be proud of yourself like yeah when everything happened you know when grief and stuff even when i you know we have different levels of grief obviously but obviously everyone has their own experience but i was struggling with you know granny passing away and obviously mm-hmm. your struggle with your dad passing away but look but, how far yeah you it's have not come. even just grief it's stuff that i've dealt with like my whole life i know that but obviously we're not gonna get into that at <laughs> no all. of course not but what i'm trying to try, trying to say is if you look back to where you were and to where you are now you are, are two different people 
Oh, yeah. Whether that's a good or a bad thing, that's entirely up to you. But I yeah. believe it's a good thing. Me too. And you should be so proud. And I want you, this is your task for the end of this podcast, okay? I want you to start flipping everything in a positive way. Okay, I'm going to therapy fucking for ages now. So I'm being brave every week. I'm doing something that is challenging me every week. Yeah? And then when you go when you go to your friends, are you all when you go to your friends and you're like, Oh, I don't want to drink. Don't drink. Challenge yourself to not drink. Or maybe have less and don't get caught mm-hmm. up in let's doing shots. Enjoy your drink. Enjoy I just the love moment. A margarita. Then just have a fucking margarita and don't think anything of it. Just go, I'm having this margarita because I fucking can. Yeah. And tomorrow I'll deal with it. But right now, <laughs> don't let it the affect you. The power of now. Yeah. And also, if you want to read a book, don't go, God, what if I'm. Re-? Go, I, if I'm going to read this book. In listen, that moment, I'm listen. not like, oh my God, I'm ruining my life. No, but, I'm never going to have memories. Guys, I'm not that deep. No, I'm not but that what pathetic. I, what I, want, I just mean in the big picture. Yeah, but I know, but what I want you to do is when you read that book. Yeah. Yeah. And you're having these potential thoughts. You're not having any thoughts. So your anxiety's taking over. Go. I, if I'm going to read this book, I'm going to have the fucking best time reading this book. Get cozy. Yeah. Get yeah. in bed. Get a safe environment. And I do do that. It's just sometimes. Sometimes I think, am I boring at this age? I'm 22. You know, you're only young for a certain amount of your life, and then you're old for a lot longer of it. Bro, my auntie, yeah, she's fucking on smoke at now. She's at 50. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, she's living life to the fullest. That's true. And age is generally just, just a number. number, unless you're a fucking paedophile. Yeah. then don't <laughs> but other than that like age is generally just a number it's like it's you you're 50 but you can jump out of a plane mm-hmm. you're There's 60 so and you're, you can you're do. skydiving yeah, you, really can do anything. you go snorkeling you could go fucking bounty hunting do you know what I'm saying you could mm-hmm. go you do a Bear Grylls adventure what's stopping you it's yeah. all it is is your confidence like oh, I'm 60 I can't do that now why not yeah why not oh because it's embarrassing uh, it says who? Oh, yeah. people's going to judge me. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. You're 60. And if anything, they're going to be like, that is badass. Mm-hmm. Why is this 60 man, 60 year old man skydiving out of a fucking plane? <laughs> That's crazy. Is he okay? The yeah. G-force is going to crack his bones. <laughs> like, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> oh, I'm, I think that's so cool, man. Uh-huh. I, I want to start doing things. We should start doing things that's pushing out of our comfort zone. Let's go skydiving. I said I would. Not bungee jumping though, I'm not a fucking no, idiot. No, that's fine. Because that shit can actually crack your yeah, bones. Yeah, I'm not doing that. But I will jump out of a plane with you if you want. Well, speaking of silly, silly of you if you're not following us on Instagram. Oh, like that plug in. <laughs> Best friends who fuck on Instagram and on all social platforms. Follow our TikTok guys and our Instagram and follow our own personal Instagrams. Come on, get me to 100k. All the links are down below. Guys, We I don't know, by the time we post this, we might be on 3,000 subscribers on YouTube. <gasps> we might be. If we're not, get us there. And, and review, 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 review. If you're on Apple um, Apple Music, I think it is, and, and Spotify. Because Spotify. Spotify, we were trying to get, to, we want to get to the top 100 UK podcasts. We've been staying, we're, we're on the way from 150 to 200, like for like, I don't know, for 11, 12 weeks now. We yeah. just can't bash through that 100 mark. So let's try and do it as a squad, yeah? Come on. Come in. Well, thank you guys for listening and we will see you next week at Thursday, 6pm for a new episode. Love you all. Bye-bye.